Hi, this is Mr. Fleming, and this video is for my Art 2 class, and we're just coming back from Thanksgiving holiday, and I hope you all feel well rested. And we have about three weeks before the Christmas holiday, and it can be difficult sometimes staying motivated with the holidays, and it is very important, especially with this hybrid model and this coronavirus, and we've talked about in class, it's maybe not fair, but it is the reality that you're expected to do a lot more on your own and to manage your time. And I'm going to do the best I can to help you out with that, but the reality is you are working on your own an awful lot. Um, if you were in school full-time, I would have you five days in the classroom, which can be a lot more time for demonstration and practice. But I think we're using our time well, and I do think there's product that um, we produce in the classroom that other people could look at objectively and think that you are progressing as artists, as students, and as young adults. Now, the project we're working on really is typography, and typography is the use of the text in an artwork in itself. Now, it really has a lot more to do with print and way print is developed and how to present print. We're really more in a drawing to class, and I focus on typography only because of the emphasis of communicating to an audience. And I gave you the poem by Robert Frost, Fire and Ice, and I gave it to you because it is just very simple to illustrate. The imagery is right there for anyone to use. Fire, ice, hate, desire, destruction. Everything's there, so it's easy. Now, you could choose something else, and I wanted you to, to practice many different things. But I also wanted to practice your thumbnails, okay? This is essential. I should see several ideas before you come in with the finished product. And a few students have already, I've done Mr. Fleming, here it is. And the products are quite good, they're just not refined. They're not taken to another level. And that refinement's very important. And with this project, I want to focus on pro process. And for the setup, I did several thumbnails in the sketchbook because I wanted to do different practice. And with that, I also had the words printed out, fire and ice, that you were given, that if you didn't have a poem or a lyrics, I wanted you to arrange them in which the text was the focus, and here I have the word, the poem, fire and ice, going on the outside edge, and here it's on the globe, and the world's on fire, and ice is down below, and the spacing is messed up. That's actually called kerning and letting we talked about in that class, and I would have to fix this to bring this to a final draft. Um, kern, uh, kern, kerning and letting has to do with the spacing of text, the space between the letters, the space between the lines, to make them more legible or just aesthetically more pleasing and you, you can see that with letters with letter T going against the letter G it can be clumsy sometimes getting that spacing just right and that's what a typographer does and that's a different career field we want to illustrate we want to use our drawing skills to illustrate an idea and this one is fire nice and it's pretty good I did work on a different idea to kind of help um, let me just find it <laughs> that it could be very simple. And here is another series of thumbnails I did. Um, this is the myth of um, Sisyphus. I don't know if you know the story. I forget what he did to make the gods mad at him. I think he stole fire, but now I'm thinking that might be Prometheus. I'll have to look at my Greek mythology. But anyway, the curse was this. He was to roll a rock up a hill. It would roll down. He was cursed to roll that hill back up over and over and over again. And I won't go into the mythology of why that's important. I just like the imagery. So I have several different images of a person rolling off the rock. And what I want to do is put the word debt in it. Now, this is because it is a reality. And I actually think that debt is slavery 2.0. Again, don't get me rambling because you know I will. But so here is my new idea. And that is, I'm going to use the human figure and he's rolling up a rock, but I have several figures rolling up rocks, each one says debt, and they roll up this ramp, and this is considered a rough, okay, and that's what I'm looking for is the process. We have um, the assignment, which is typography, that means using the words as an artistic element within the drawing or the piece of art, and I give you fire and ice, and you're welcome to use fire and ice, I love Robert Frost, I love that poem, it's great. But I want to stress here, I'm looking for you to evolve different ideas and then choose the best one. Not just, I chose this idea, what's the rubric, I hit all the steps, give me an A. 
Although grades are important and they're a good measuring stick for a lot of reasons, there are other ways to judge your success. And one of them is, are you able to use these techniques for your own purposes? And that's really what I want to see. But that means you having several ideas to choose from, not just doing one drawing to the end, hitting all the markers and passing it in, but exploring the idea. Now, I understand we have three weeks, and that's not really a lot of time, but I think it's enough. Um, we have some drawings. We should have plenty of drawings at this point, a couple ideas. But when you come in on Monday, and certainly the Bravo should come in with an idea ready to go. What is your color? What's your imagery? What's your word? All this should be worked out in a thumbnail first, and then a rough. Now, this is not complete. This is not even close to complete. I have basic ideas for it, but I need to work it out some more. Um, one thing I want to work on is the size, and I haven't think about that greatly. Um, so many of you have asked, and the answer is yes. You can keep all your work in your sketchbook. That's fine. I would ask that you measure out your work to be 8 inches by 10 inches. That is for a couple reasons. One is if you did tear it out and put it on a wall for a critique, I don't have to put a tack into your work. I can put it in the frame. Another reason is if you did like your drawing and you wanted to put it into a mat and a frame, it's a lot easier doing 8 by 10. It's just a standard frame shape. So as far as the work goes in your sketchbook, let's reduce it even more. So we were at 9 by 12. Let's go 10 by 8. And that will give us a little room for the edges for just a little room for error. That's all. <laughs> Not that you will make mistakes. Um, but also make it easier for presentation later on. And I do want to think that some of these works can be presented later on for a portfolio. But let's keep that in mind. So we're going to work with um, 8 by 10 And we should all have at least one or two ideas worked out, thumbnails and rough, ready to go. And from there, we'll make our final drafts. And that should be done before Christmas, and I'm hoping well before Christmas, to give us a little time for me to get one extra drawing or a Christmas drawing done before we go away for holidays. So thank you for listening, and um, make art, because art won't make itself. Be well. <laughs>